The previous government promised us a gas-fired recovery, but what we've ended up with is a gas-fired catastrophe, and that's leading to very large increases in your energy bills. So let's have a look at how we got into this mess and how we might be able to get out of it. Australia has two separate but related energy crises. The first is a gas price crisis, and the second is an electricity price crisis and a reliability crisis, largely as a result of increases in gas prices. Between 2014 and 2021, production of gas in Eastern Australia tripled. Despite a tripling of supply, the wholesale gas price being paid by Australians increased by around 250%, from under $4 a gigajoule to over $10 a gigajoule. Then in the last couple of months with the war in Ukraine, the price went really through the roof, eventually being capped at $40 a gigajoule, which is 10 times the price we were paying just a few years ago. But we were always told that Australia has a huge amount of gas, so surely if we've got so much gas of our own, we shouldn't have to worry about international prices. It's true that we've got a huge amount of gas. The problem is that our governments have given away control of our gas resources to a group of multinational oil and gas companies who are now making us compete with exports for our own gas. To give you an idea of just how crazy this is, 80% of Australia's gas is exported and the export companies use more gas just running their export facilities than Australia's entire manufacturing industry. And that's not including the gas they export, that's just the gas they use for liquefying the gas that they're going to export. Because they can force Australian customers to compete with exports for our own gas, we're now permanently exposed to global crises, including when we have massive disruptions from international conflicts as we have with the war in Ukraine at the moment. This means that companies can make windfall profits not just from charging overseas customers more, but from charging Australian customers more. And to be clear, they're not doing anything differently uh, to make these windfall profits. They're supplying the same gas to the same customers, just charging 10 times more for it because they can. And it's important to understand that this was no accident. For example, when Santos were trying to get their Gladstone LNG export project approved about a decade ago, and this is one of the big projects that expo has exposed Eastern Australia to international gas prices, they told our governments that their projects wouldn't increase Australian gas prices. But at the same time, they were telling investors that they had a deliberate strategy of linking their domestic gas reserves to global prices so they could charge Australian customers more. This was basically fraudulent and they've never been held to account for this. They also assured governments that only export gas from their own coal seam gas tenements that they were developing for the export market, but they radically overstated their reserves and contracted more gas than they ha actually had for international sales, then plundered gas fields that had been developed for the Australian market to make up the difference which made the problem even worse. All this leads to high gas bills, not only for households and businesses who use gas for heating, hot water and cooking, but also for our manufacturers. And because we use gas to produce electricity, it's also the main driver for rising electricity prices. Even in the midst of the current gas crisis, as Australian gas power stations were running out of gas, these companies were exporting huge amounts of uncontracted gas to the global spot market to cash in on super high global prices. So who are these companies that we've given control of our gas resources to? Most of them are entirely foreign owned companies like Exxon Shell and Chevron, but even the ones based in Australia like Santos, Woodside and Origin are mostly foreign owned. Overall, gas export projects exporting Australian gas are 95% foreign owned. This is important because it means that 95% of the profits go straight overseas and provide no benefit to Australia. On top of that, many of these companies pay no income tax, despite making billions of dollars of income from selling our gas every year. Few pay any resource rent tax, and for a lot of the gas, no royalties are paid either. Royalties are not a tax, they're a payment for the raw materials that are made to the owners of those materials who are the people of Australia. No royalties were paid on around two thirds of the gas being exported from Western Australia, so they're getting the gas for free, and many of them are paying little if any tax. So how did this happen? We need answers. We need a thorough inquiry to get to the bottom of how our governments gave control of almost all of Australia's gas to a bunch of foreign owned companies. And how did our government let these companies off the hook of paying a decent amount of company tax or even royalties in some cases and allow them to gouge Australian customers for our own gas? Never once to miss an opportunity. These same companies are using 
this disaster that they've caused to argue they need to drill for even more gas to solve the problem, the problem that they've created. Whatever the question uh, is, it seems that more gas is the answer. But this is ridiculous. To believe that drilling more gas will reduce gas prices when they've tripled gas production and ended up with a tenfold in increase in prices is a triumph of hope over experience. It's utterly disingenuous and it, it, it is amazing that some of our politicians and commentators in the media repeat these claims unquestionably. We don't have a gas supply problem, we have a gas export problem. And any new gas that's drilled can be exported. And even if they sell it to Australian customers, they can still charge, charge us international prices. A great example is Santos, who are trying to present their Narrabri gas project as a solution to the gas crisis. Santos promised they'll send all the gas from Narrabri to the New South Wales market, but what they don't mention is that currently around half of New South Wales gas is supplied from the Cooper Basin, and Santos are also involved in the Cooper Basin, so they can simply send the equivalent amount less gas from the Cooper Basin into New South Wales and export the Cooper Basin gas. It's a zero-sum game for Australian customers. But the good news is there's a clear way out. Fortunately, there's cheaper alternatives to gas for pretty much everything we use gas for. For generating electricity, renewable energy is far cheaper than gas, even when the cost of storage and transmission is added. So we need to roll out renewables with storage as quickly as possible. It's far cheaper to heat our houses and hot water with electricity and have induction cooktops for cooking. And every household in Victoria that gets off gas will save hundreds, if not over $1,000 a year. Even in manufacturing, only a small amount of gas is needed as feedstock for plastics and fertilizers. The vast majority is for heat and much of that can be provided with electricity from renewable energy. The barrier is that to get off gas, we need to help households and industry uh, to get the new appliances and equipment to use electricity instead of gas. Fortunately, um, there's a clear and easy way to do this that won't cost taxpayers a cent. We can Im immediately implement a windfall profits tax on the windfall profits being made by these companies, largely from gouging Australian customers for our own gas in the first place. We can use that money to roll out renewable energy, transmission and storage, and help households and manufacturers get off gas. This is not only fair, it's economically responsible. Even the former Australian Treasury Secretary, Ken Henry, has called for it. If we get onto this now, we can save households and industry uh, billions of dollars in energy bills over the coming years, and even more importantly, cut emissions and help tackle, tackle climate change. But first we need our governments to stand up to the gas industry.